Welcome back, world warriors, to the worst fighting game. My divine struggle to find the undisputed champion of baffingly bad button bashers. And there's nothing more button bashy than Street Fighter the movie. Yes, it's finally time. This was Capcom's woeful attempt to try and cash in on Mortal Kombat's encroaching popularity in the Western arcade scene. While the mainline Street Fighter 2 series was slowly losing momentum with each revision, Mortal Kombat was only getting bigger and bigger. Thus, Capcom reached out to a local Chicago-based studio called Incredible Technologies, who then- Wait, 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 no, I, I made a whole ass video chronicling this game's troubled development that, yeah, yeah, there it is, right there. If you've not yet partaken, I absolutely suggest you do. You'll be wiping away tears as you learn about this gorgeous garbage fire. That was beautiful. But just as insane as the history of SFTM is, the experience of playing it is just as insane, if not more so. It got absolutely savaged in reviews of the day, with almost all publications dismissing the everlasting crap out of it, and it being largely ignored by most fans as well. There's three reasons for this. One, the game looked terrible and was a clear visual ripoff of Mortal Kombat. Two, it lacked polish, nuance, and balance. And three, Capcom released Street Fighter Alpha Warrior's Dreams into arcades the exact same month as Street Fighter the movie, absolutely ensuring its burial. But like, why? That doesn't make any sense. Mm -mm. But then, in an attempt to salvage something from the mess, an internal Capcom team took the code and unfinished assets from incredible technologies to make vastly improved upon home ports. But were these ports vastly improved? I don't think so. Thus, for the last 27 years, this game has been a bit of a black eye for the Street Fighter franchise. It's never been re-released in any official form, and Capcom seemed to take great care in pretending it doesn't exist. Although I am surprised that someone took the time to write a massive two sentences about it in the museum section of the 30th anniversary collection. So with all that said, today's matchup is going to be a big one, because I'll be fighting against two distinct versions of the same game with their own rosters, moves, and mechanics, so I hope I'm gonna have what it takes to- You don't have what it takes, Matthew. <gasps> Maximilian from YouTube, Twitch, and the popular fighting game podcast Triple KO. What are you doing here? Uh, you asked me to be on. Uh, right. Well, with you at my side, let's see just how dark this chapter of Capcom history truly got when we get Street Fighter the movie in the ring. All right, so yeah, a, a sliver of context. Capcom was really impressed by the visuals and color palette of Time Killers for some reason, and wanted Incredible Technologies to work that same magic into Street Fighter. But they also wanted the actors who were on set during the summer 1994 shoot of the film to be digitized because Mortal Kombat. With the limited time they had capturing the actors, coupled with their general inexperience, most of the cast were not trained martial artists, this is what you wind up with, a very visually busy game with awkward Street Fighter cosplayers. The characters look like they've been squirted on with like two gallons of baby oil, and across the board, there's simultaneously too much animation and also not enough. I don't understand. I know you don't. Unlike Mortal Kombat, which invented a simple and clear moveset, uppercuts, sweeps, and basic punches and kicks, Incredible Technologies had to replicate and digitize classic special moves in crazy looking normals that were designed with sprites in mind, which wasn't an exact science. The backgrounds are kind of similar in that they feature tons, again maybe too much, additional animation, effects, and NPCs like the cage match stage scene here, which aggressively hides lots of information from you. Sure, it's movie accurate, but when you need to judge spacing and timing, it's a hindrance. I will say, technically, the stages are pretty impressive because there's a lot going on, just so many layers. And some of them are interactive too. You can blow up stuff in the background with hidden commands or have Van Damme gesture to anyone that dares talk shit about him. As for the roster, well, it's an odd one. Try to be shocked. 
everyone from Super Turbo appears, except not everyone. Blanca and DJ's footage was captured, but never finished in time for release. The actor that played T-Hawk just never showed up. Fei Long was transformed into Sawada, and Dalsim was never even considered. There is, of course, the all-new, all-original character Blade, a random bison trooper. Wait, did I say character? I meant characters. In a very overt Mortal Kombat dig, there's three other masked, color-coded warriors. Arcane... F7 and Kyber, all of them sharing from a pool of really similar moves. If I'm gonna be honest, they had very little to the proceedings. You know what, for a minute, they're almost useful. Now we do have to talk about the audio because it, it's, it's, you know, a, a bit, a little rough around the edges because, and, okay, okay, that, that's enough. It, it's bad, but is it so bad that it's hilarious? Yeah, I, I think it's pretty subjective. Music-wise, it's a mixed bag because while the standard soundtrack is a paltry selection of derivative, somewhat grungy tunes found in other IT uh, smash hits like Time Killers and Bone Storm, they did include an alternative soundtrack. This is composed of remixed Street Fighter 2 themes that you select by inputting codes at the Versus screen, and honestly, they're pretty good. Loading Geek has a whole playthrough that features this music so check that out if you're interested. Endings are a bit of a disappointment though. I would have killed for like 30 second live action clips of the Street Fighters doing something stupid or having something stupid done to them. Like Ken getting gunned down after a, a deal gone bad, Chun-Li becoming the CEO of CNN, or Sagat investing all his bison dollars into funding porn, I don't know. Instead, it's just a few promo pics of the actors and pretty bland descriptions. The only one worth a mention is Blades, which reveals him to be Guile's brother, Gunlock. A weird connection that Capcom USA was pushing at that time, as this was also hinted at in Saturday Night Slam Masters. No matter the ending though, you at least get this clip every time you clear the game. Yay! So while the presentation of the arcade version certainly has its flaws, it is indeed colorful and at least visually commands your attention for a minute or two, like something gross yet intriguing floating in a vat of pickle juice. I'm not sure the same can be said about the console ports. I Wait, can you say that about the console ports, Max? No, you cannot. This is a completely different game that, while shares some of the same graphical assets from the arcade, looks incredibly washed out, blurry, and desaturated on the PlayStation and Saturn. If you then look really closely, you can tell that Capcom artists drew over or made completely new frames to bring the animation more in line with Street Fighter 2, but this makes for a jarring mix depending on the move or character. Speaking of which, the roster has seen some notable additions and omissions. Gone are all of the ninjas. I mean, uh, uh, bison troopers, but in their place is a weird scrawny Blanca. They pumped this guy with super steroids the entire movie and this is what they got? And DJ in the most regal gray sweatpants. I should have stayed at Microsoft. Every stage is now more plain and has way less elements to them, but at least there's no longer tons of shit blocking your view. It's impressive that Capcom cobbled together so many other assets and imagery from the movie, but it is bizarre that they put so much effort into these new backgrounds that it starts to make you think, what is this? A port? Ah, a remake. Let's not quibble over definition. This extends over to the audio, which has been completely overhauled. You get new voices that are exclusive to this very game. <laughs> and sound like a mix between Super Turbo and Alpha? The music is brand new as well, and also skews towards the Alpha soundscape, and while not as iconic, is still pretty solid. Endings are unique too, and overall are more Street Fighter-ish than the MK-style stuff Incredible Technologies had done. Capcom was weirdly obsessed with Chun-Li's red dress though, as multiple endings mention it for some reason. So yeah, while neither version is, you know, pristine in terms of presentation, they do have advantages and disadvantages over each other, but to really see the difference between them, let's check out the... So, 
cards on the table. Street Fighter the movie The Arcade plays like was made in Mugen. Hell, I, I don't know, maybe it inspired the creation of Mugen. What I mean by that is that there's so few rules and boundaries in what you can do. There are some, but not many. Almost everyone has TODs or infinites, things that shouldn't combo into each other absolutely do, and there's not only cross-ups, but cross-downs, cross-rights, cross-all-arounds. Aside from the normal repertoire of special moves, Incredible Technology saw fit to add some new ones in too, cuz fuck it. There's Zangief's airplane spin, Guile's handcuffs, Bison's electricity, And, and Sagat's eye laser. The sheer balls of incredible technologies to go, yeah, Sagat has magic under his eye patch, what, want to fight about it is, uh, well, it's something. It doesn't stop there though because there's a bunch of wholly new mechanics. The first is interrupt moves, where if you perform a character's specific command while blocking, you'll reverse into an invincible special move with green shadows. Remember, this came out the same month as Alpha 1, so either great minds think alike, or it was something Capcom had asked to be included. Next is the comeback move, which is another powerful special that you can only use when your health is low. Kami can throw grenades, Guile has an explosive sonic boom that he can manually detonate, and Chun-Li can shoot birds. We're not done. If you hold two buttons and release, you can exchange super bar to heal yourself. Everyone does this sensual little wiggle and they get like 20% health back. I, I mean, why not? Then there's the throws. Oh God, the throws. I want to talk about this. No, 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 you don't. Uh, you can throw, reverse, counter reverse, and then... These are incredibly hard to do, and remembering every input to become the master of slam is kind of pointless, as it'll probably never factor into a practical match. Every character, except one of the bison troopers, eh, who cares, gets two types of super moves. The ones with classic blue shadows are what you'd expect. Multiple flash kicks, super fireballs, final atomic buster, etc. However, the red shadow supers come purely from the mad minds down at an incredible technologies. Usually they're multi-hitting flurries, like Guile or Ryu's here, but then there's Ken's throw super or Bison's crazy head stomp that dizzies his opponent. Why? Why would you give him that? It's broken as fuck! Of course! <laughs> right, let's finish up with the modes. Well, it's an arcade game, so it only has one. Oh wait, I lied. There's a hidden tag team mode, and even a few code-activated gameplay modifiers for the hell of it. Say what you will about how it looks and plays, but Incredible Technologies was stuffing extras in until the 11th hour. When you look at everything as a whole, though, it comes across as this unbalanced, messy, drunken circus, and you can hardly believe what your eyes are showing you. Yeah, and all that dumb drunken clown shit, that was scrubbed clean by Capcom for the home versions. The supers were changed to be exactly like they behave in Super Turbo, and the red shadow ones were cut altogether. Yeah, you actually have less options in this. There's no comeback moves, interrupts, no new specials, and worst of all, no- They did add in one additional mechanic, though, and this isn't from the arcade either, so strap yourselves in. I think you will find the coming events most uh, educational. Street Fighter the Movie for consoles is the first Street Fighter game that lets you EX. Yeah, spend a chunk of your super bar, and you can do an enhanced special move. And if you wait until your super bar is full, you can do them indefinitely. It's so fucking insane that these games spawned a bunch of mechanics that would later make their way into mainline entries. Where the home version does win out is in the modes. Not quite on the level of Alpha 3 on the PSP, but it's something. Trial Battle is weird, as it just lets you play random matches which then rate you on aggressiveness, completion, and mastery? You can then save the data which does something... What the fu- Okay, honestly, the main draw is the movie battle. This is basically the first cinematic story mode in a fighting game? You're presented with a guile-only scenario and cutscenes which give you a number of choices, which then lead to different paths and characters to fight. You can even lose certain battles which result in other outcomes altogether, and it's all within the framework of a ticking countdown clock. Take too long, and that son of a bitch bison blows up the hostages, you'll foil his evil plan. Wow, it's just like in the hit movie. That's right, Matthew. Now, clearly they did the best they could with the limited material they had, but the gameplay is still a sludgy, weird version of Super Turbo. But I gotta be honest, 
This mode is kind of neat. Oh yeah, home version uh, feels sludgy, does it? Yes, very. So I guess we better talk about the- They both suck ass. Yeah, while the arcade version moves at a clip where it's constantly ingesting a cocktail of cocaine, speed, and four loco, that doesn't mean it feels great to play. It just lacks Street Fighter 2's deliberate polished nature. Everything is going buck wild at every single moment that by the time you come to grips with it, the match is already over. The priority is specific moves and supers, the way Balrog can block and reflect projectiles, or Ryu and Ken can control the height of said projectiles, means the game was clearly designed by people who were throwing everything at the wall to see what would stick, which guaranteed it would never stick. The game feel, coupled with its ludicrous speed, means you can't really rely on any set strategy. It's a wild, lawless world where everything goes. And it's the opposite over on the PlayStation and Saturn. It plays way too safely. Yeah, the EX specials, new voices, and the movie battle are novel additions, but it's just not enough. The whole point of the project was to make a different kind of Street Fighter, but this is the same thing, just uglier and slower. Although, it does have this exclusive Sawada Super. That's some good shit. Wait, wait, no, no, I mean, no, it's not. Overall, it's bad shit. I had a bad time playing this again. Damn you, McMuscles! Okay, well, that means it's time to see where these two very different contenders will land on our list of the worst fighting games. Honestly, despite it feeling so sloppy, unbalanced, and it looking really very ugly, the wild gameplay and insane mechanics kind of make this the least bad game on the list. It goes so far south that it breaks all measurements of scale and goes from a 0 to a 10, making it, well, that'll be just fine. I hate you. Every single second you're playing the home version, you just wish you were playing Super Turbo or Alpha, or almost anything else. Not because it's terrible or broken, mind you. It's just nothing. I get how Capcom wanted to fix things, but they went way, way too far in the other direction. Overcorrecting incredible technology's work? Nah, I don't even like the smell of this at all. So, so you put this in your stink category you have up there. I don't even care. Thanks, Max, for stopping in and lending a helping hand or fist for today's episode. Don't ask me to be on this again. And if you out there want to suggest the next opponent you'd like me to take on, do let me know in the comments below or sound the gong over on my Twitter. Until then, World Warriors, I'll see you next time on The Worst Fighting Game. Yeah.